Praise the Lord. This is a record for all of us people on time in the house of God, even the pastor. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for time being a blessing. Come all the way from Salina to help us pick up people. And I, I didn't tell you this, Bobby, when I picked you up. I was going to say, I'm going to surprise Sean and Kelly because I'm going to beat them to church. <laughs> I got him frustrated. That pastor always late. That's I'm gonna make up for it. I'll be on time. I'm thankful for what the Lord's doing, what God's doing in this last hour. Yeah. So Spring, my uncle would came, he just a little weak, so he said, Can he come next week? So he's gonna be coming to the house of God. So Spring was like, We didn't get your uncle to the house of God. And God's working on him and doing great things in this last hour. We're gonna start the service off with prayer if we all can pray together. God, we want to thank you for a chance to be in your great house once again. God, we ask that you bless all those that come to hear the word of the Lord. God, that you anoint your speaker, that he can break the yoke of every sin, every chain, every bondage that is upon your people. We ask that you that this be done in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We have the ladies from Salina going to sing some beautiful songs and just to share a testimony, a quick testimony with you. Uh, I was in my office writing up, finished up writing my sermon. And one of the songs is about the shepherd. And the Lord put on my heart to preach about the good shepherd. Oh. And we never coordinated with each other. And I just felt the confirmation <laughs> of the Holy That's Ghost awesome, yeah. of God letting us know, hey, we're on track for what he's doing. Let me get out the way while the, the talented people sing. I used to get up here and try to sing. And if I, sometimes they're not here, I'll pinch hit. And so I'll torture you off for a little bit. But when we got someone else who can sing, I'm going to get out the way. Yeah. Amen. God bless y'all. We worship together.
watch your will and be done, and we can't That's do right. that without first developing a relationship with you, Lord. That's right. We want to see the mountains move. We want to see right. the chains loose. Yes. Amen. Oh, amen. amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
all times and in his praise shall be in my mouth continually. That means no matter what I'm going through, I'm going to praise my Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. If you, if you don't have a mask on, we do have plenty of masks up front. If you know we're going to have new visitors and stuff, we want everyone to feel comfortable. When they come into the sanctuary, I had a guy that I talked to that went to another church in another city. And because they have not made that a reference to people, he said, I'm not going to even come no more. And we don't want no one not coming to the house of God because they don't feel safe. So if you don't have one, there's a mask in the basket right over there up front. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And I am excited what God's doing. Amen. Amen. 
just kind of give you some new understanding for people that live for God. When you first start walking with God, the devil throws everything at you he possibly can throw at you. Yeah. Why? Because he does not want to see you saved. No, he don't. He's going to do everything he can. He's going to try to stop you. He's going to try to fight you. He's going to bring up your past. He's going to bring up evil things. Anything he can do to get you out of the kingdom of God. And what does the Bible teach us? It says that God said, also, I'm not going to shake heaven, but I'm also going to shake earth, off, earth also. And the things that cannot be shaken are going to remain. I've been standing the test of time, Sean, 24 years living for God. And there have been some bad days and sad days, but I'm going to say through it all, the Lord is my shepherd, and right. I shall not want. He has kept me through them hard times. And I can't barely say, I haven't felt like giving up, Gerald. Because I know how good I got it. It don't matter tomorrow if I lose everything. Everything gets burned up. You know what? I still got God. That's right. And I'm not just living for this life. I'm living for eternal life that's coming after this. Yeah. Some of the people are leaving. They have the church in Salina, so they make a sacrifice to come be with us and be a blessing. But they got their service at 2, so they got to run up there and get ready for their service. So we're thankful for the sacrifice of driving 45 miles just to help us out so we can have some worship time and praise and stuff like that. So we're... We're just, we're just thankful. We're just thankful for God's doing. That would be that microphone, right? I don't know. I see. I got the other one. It seems like it does it over and over again. It doesn't like it does it. Doesn't like it. Oh, is it? I think the devil's in it. Cast it out. Cast it. Say again. Oh, it ain't gonna stop me. We just we got four. Thanks God, we got four mics, and we'll just keep on going. All right, so today's Bible lesson is going to be on the blood of Jesus Christ. And like I said earlier, I want to thank everybody for showing up. Thank you for being a blessing, being in church. And we're going to keep on going. And we're on time today. Everybody's on time. Thank you, Jesus. And the blood of Jesus Christ is a very important subject. And my sermon today will be on Jesus is the good shepherd that cares for the sheep. Uh, we're going to be taking our scripture reading from Colossians 1 and 20 through 23. Just give you a little idea about uh, the blood of Jesus Christ. It never loses its power. That's right. Blood is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible and essential to the doctrine of Christ and the atonement. It lies at the very heart of the gospel, for it is through the blood of the cross that Jesus reconciled us to God. And if you look at that, Charlie, you know, when you came to service last week, you were struggling with spirits and everything was beating your mind. The Holy Ghost said, That's out of, we have, we're not. Problem by tradition. Tradition is we gotta wait till service over. We gotta wait till everything's done to baptize. The Holy Ghost said, baptize that man. I was like, who can I resist God? God, you run this. Yes. God runs the show. That's right. So after you baptize, how did you feel after you got baptized? Free. Free. You didn't feel that that struggle that you wanted to, you couldn't contain it. That's how good God is. Yes. Before we start our service, we think got it how we're gonna do our testimony. After you do the service, we're going to do a little testimony. And just so we have order, uh, when I ask people to testify, once I stop it, we'll just stop the testifying. So we're not, I'm talking and someone wants to testify. I'm talking again and someone else wants to testify. We want, the Bible says, let everything be decent and order in the house of God. So I'm open up for testimony if you want to brag on Jesus. And then once the last person, I'm going to say this is the last person to testify. And then we'll stop testifying until next time we open it up. Does anybody want to testify before we get started about the goodness of Jesus? Yes. The Lord got me to get her, my daughter, here today. Amen. Oh. That's important. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Thank you. Amen. Our kids need to be in the house of God. That's right. That is so important for our kids to be in the house of God. Yes. And that's going to help our kids because, you know, a lot of kids are going to be struggling with things. And it's good. You never know what kids are going through. You never know what they're going through in their life. And that is important that they get preached to because God knows everything. And they can be struggling on something you don't even know or you don't even think about it. And God, through the preaching, can touch their heart and say, hey, you're struggling with this, and we're going to work that out. And they need that. That's right. And that's what the devil, you know why the devil's fights are used so much about coming to church? Sure. Why? Guess why? Because they're our future. Yes. And if he can wipe out that future generation, he has destroyed the church. You know, the Bible talks about the inheritance of the Lord. Do you know there's a lot of good, strong churches that start off, Charlie, and they're not even here today? You know why? Because it was the family business. And they passed it over to their kids. 
that didn't even care about God. And they ran a good church right down the ground. Because this ain't our inheritance, Sean. This is the Lord's inheritance. So when it comes to the time for me to pass off the scene or somebody take it over, I would love to be able to hand it over to my son if this was the family business. But this ain't the family business. It has to be a man that's called, anointed, God's choice, yes. who God wants to take over. Yes. And that's why you find out through America, a lot of churches are closing their doors because they handed it over as a family business and it went bankrupt because God was not in charge. So let's focus on that and getting our kids involved. And sometimes when you're young, it's hard to pay attention because how the entertainment industry has set us up that we have to have, you know, in movies, almost every 30 seconds, 30 to 60 seconds, they have to have an action scene. Something blowing up, destroying, why? Yeah. Just to catch people's attention. Blood, gore, and everything. And so when it comes to the point to sit down and listen to someone, it's kind of hard because, man, ain't enough action. You know, if I yeah. jumped up doing hula hoop, slapping, punching people, they, man, we didn't watch that for you, it's time. But that's not a real show. That's a fake. And we're going to be real about things. Right. Yes. From Colossians 1, 20 through 23. And it says, And having made peace through the blood of cross, of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. I got a lot of static. I don't know if I, if I change this thing. Yeah. Thank you. If you don't see me standing, I want her to testify. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I thought you were just man. You no, just... I don't stand for no reason. <laughs> I thought you were. No, I can't stand. I thought you were just. I thought you. No. Were... I just thought you wanted to see that new outfit. What outfit? <laughs> I'm sorry, yes, Sister Freeman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I don't have no new clothes. I'll mess with you. I'll mess with you. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tess. Oh, okay. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Y'all forgive me, Pat. Forgive me. I don't know. Praise the Lord, church family. Praise the Lord. I just want to say last night, uh, I was helping Pastor at his house, and we were getting rid of all the stuff in the house. And I had my key all day long, and then all of a sudden he asked me to unlock my car so he could put something in there. I unlocked the car and lost my keys. So we were looking for my car keys. I couldn't even find my car keys. And so we were calling. My key is like $200 for a key right. to get it programmed. And so I couldn't find the key. We couldn't, we couldn't find the key. We couldn't find the key. We found it fast. And we pulled out the stuff out the car. In the rack, we couldn't find the key, so we had to call a locksmith. And then um, after we called the locksmith, he went back out to my car and he started praying and asked God to help him find the key. He found the key in my car. Amen. Amen. God is good. And I thank God I didn't have to. He saved me. That's why I pay my tithes, because he saves me in times like this. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. And uh, I'm sorry about that, Sister Freeman. I'm getting old. See now. Okay. In my old age. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's just uh, a good thing, you know, being faithful to God. I, I remember I had a guy that came to church, and he went and did some tree work. And his tithes were about three bucks. And he paid his tithes, and I was just so happy. It ain't about the amount. It's about the principle about being on God, being God. And that man, needed, he said, Pastor, we need $50 for our medication. I don't have it. I said, Brother, since you've been faithful to God, I'm going to go pull out my pocket to take care of your need. Why? Because he showed his principles of doing what God teaches us to do. Right. And then God makes up for the rest. That's right. Colossians 1, 20 through 23. And it says, having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether there be things on earth or things in heaven. Through the blood, God's going to reconcile. Reconcile means to bring back. So, Charlie, just like how you were... Um, in the world and sin, what God did through the blood, he brought you back unto him, back to the purpose. Now you feel you have purpose. Yes. You have destiny. Yes. And that's to reach and save those which are lost, to go out there. Uh, people are asking about you already. Is that guy coming? I said, he got the ride. Sonny Kelly, they're taking care of him. Because yes. uh, Tom was like, hey, I can pick that guy up. Where's that guy that got delivered last week? <laughs> and, uh, you know, understand, you're, it's a testimony what God's doing. Do you know, just because that testimony to get baptized and get delivered, there's going to be more people come to God yes. just because of that. Because they're excited. There's a guy who was going to be here. We went by and knocked on his door. He couldn't get up, but we're going to get him next time. He said he wants to come to church because he saw what happened to you. Yes. There was another guy. He even put on his YouTube channel, you're getting baptized. And he has almost like 999 subscribers. 
That touched him so much. Yes. To God be the glory. You got to see that to me. Amen. So you're on YouTube. I've seen the link. Okay. And uh, so seeing Sean get baptized, the Spirit of God moved on him so strong. Him just weeping before God. He even made it on TikTok. Famous guy. <laughs> <laughs> 21, and it says, and then sometimes you are alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have they reconciled. Sometimes when we're not living for God, it's, you know, one thing I want to share with you, when you're not living for God, you're alienated to the blessings and the things of God. And sometimes we get, we get uh, I think coming out of my old church, I was there 24 years, and I was around barely anybody that lied to me, but around barely anybody. I had some people do me dirty. You know, I remember one time I worked a job, and I worked at a call center, and uh, it was the Western Wilds. It was a call center for Cellular One. It was back called Cellular One. And at that time, uh, if anybody knows me about interviewing, if you ever have the job and you need an interview, I'm actually, I teach people how to interview. And the reason I learned how to interview, I kept getting denied this job, and I knew I was qualified for it. So I started studying how to interview. I started studying how to answer questions, and I got so good at it. Uh, when I was at my new job for uh, West uh, for Char of Southwest CPOC Human Resources, I went to, anybody know about the government system, you have like 12 and 13, and it only goes up to 15. So I went and sat in an interview board with Julius 12s and 13s. And when they interviewed me, they was only able to knock me on two questions out of the whole interview. And guess what the two questions they were? They asked me, who's the smartest person I know? And I said, myself. <laughs> <laughs> They said, we didn't like the question, you sound arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> and the next question they adopt me on, they said, Joseph, you got to act like you're trying. You answer the questions too fast, it's like you don't even have to think about it. So they said, i got to act like I don't know what I'm talking about a little bit. So that was just interviewing. And so when I was working on one of my jobs, a lady asked, I said, hey, I can help you on your interview. She said, whatever. I said, okay, try me. So I helped her on her interview. She didn't get the job because they wanted they want somebody to really con control. So then opportunity came up for another position. One of the ladies that met her, that knew her from the side, she said, I can tell you something. I said, well, she said what? She said, you interviewed so well in that last job. They don't even need to interview you. They just had to go through the paper procedure. And that was just the blessing of God. So I went to get this job, and I got denied. So I went and talked to the manager one day, and you know, we talked a little about it. And she said, Joseph, let me tell you why I got denied. And she just was up front with me. She, this was when I was single before I met my beautiful wife. She said, if you date management here, you'll move up in rank. And I was like, what? And I was like, nah, you ain't buying me. Because what happened we don't get along one day? And then I get fired? No. Yeah, I ain't playing that game. And I tell people, you know, when I hear about ignorant people getting fired at the job for sexual harassment, you never mix business with pleasure. Don't try to date people you go to work with. Amen. And it's talking about reconciling things unto himself. We're alienated to things of God. And I'm trying to bring out the point that sometimes when sinners do bad things or do evil things, why did they do that? When you're not living for God, you're prone to do evil things. You're prone to be bound. You're prone to be addicted. That's why God has to reconcile you with his blood and bring you to salvation. A person that's not born again is going to naturally do the things that are not pleasing to God. We are alienated, alienated from God. That means we're separated from the things of God and the mind of Christ. That's why we have to get the mind of Christ in us by being born again of the water and spirit. And verse 22, in the body of his flesh do death to present you holy and unblameable and reprovable in his sight. One thing I want to share to you that the Bible says you're saved by faith, not by works that any man can boast. I believe in holiness. I believe in separation. But if you're doing it just to be saved, that's works. We do it because we fill with the Holy Ghost and we want to please God. If we just do it just because the, the Bible says, I just got to do it so I can be saved, you're doing works and you're not having obedience and faith in Jesus Christ. It's because of him we live and we have our being. It's because of him we can be saved and have salvation. It's because we understand that we're going to be obedient to the word of God. So we teach you something out of the word of God and you openly rebel out of it. What does that let this pastor know? That lets us know if you really love God or not. It's that simple. We can say we love God. Oh, I love God. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. But when it comes down to when this word gets preached and we don't obey the word of God, that lets us know where our relationship is with God. Verse 23. If you continue in faith grounded and settled. 
When we're talking about teaching, Bible study diet is teaching, we want you to be grounded and settled in your faith. You know, for example, if you ever do concrete, um, I just went through a project where I lost about, I had to spend over three to $400 at my house. And the issue was, the guy, the contractor that had this house, he paid three years ago, the house I got, I got it for like $71,000. It was a repo house. And the guy that, before that, three years ago, guess how much he paid for it? $144,000. I have 50 years concrete siding on it. Remodel windows. But there was a problem in my bathtub in the shower. I kept feeling a little bounce. And I was like, what's wrong with this? And what happened, the contractor that did it before, he did not put concrete under the base of the floor. So when I take a shower, you know, I'm a big piece of leather and I'm well put together. So I'm, I'm taking my shower. You know, you got the little, little corner shower. I'm trying to stay around the edges. You know, God forbid I fall through that tub. And I started getting that little holy crack coming right through that tub. And I'm like, uh-oh. I tried to put some sealer on it, man. It didn't work. I'm starting to leak. So I had to take the whole thing out. And we had to get concrete redone right. So we had to have that foundation settled. So if you don't have that foundation settled, guess what? There was bounce. And there was starting to be a crack. That's just like I had some concrete work done. And sometimes, especially when you do work or you have somebody do work for you, get what you pay for. I had this guy give me some concrete job. He's like, oh, it'll be $2,300 do your driveway. I'm like, man, that's a good deal. I went and talked to a professional contractor. Guess what he wanted? He wanted six to 7000 So guess who I went with? The $2,300. And guess who gave me a whole bunch of cracks in my concrete? The $2,300 guy. <laughs> and when I called him, hey, can we fix it? Guess what? He didn't even have time to come look at the work he did. Because you get what you pay for. And I'm, I learned a long, I'm learned to learn, learn the hard way. You get what you pay for. So you got to be grounded in the settle. Be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. What is the hope of the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. We repent of our sins. We're baptized in Jesus' name. We're filled with the Holy Ghost. That is the hope of the gospel. And it says, which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. What is it telling us? And we can't get out of this hope. This is the way it takes to be saved. There is not another way to be saved other than the gospel. You know, there are a lot of people that come up with different ways or different ways to be saved, but it all falls down to Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And you're going to find out that as you start with your new walk with God, everybody's religious is interested in you now. Well, you know, Charlie, uh, well, I don't think you really need to go to that church. They're not really preaching it right. And I challenge everybody, well, show me in the Bible where it's wrong. Show me in the Bible where Acts 2.30 is wrong, when Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins, you should still receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that without holiness, no man should see the Lord. Show me where that's wrong in the Bible. Show, that's, show me where it's that's wrong right. for me to get free from addiction of meth and crack that's and right. cocaine and all these things. How can that be wrong? That's right. And then you ask them, where were you when I was homeless? Where were you when I needed somebody? That's right. You know, I'm going to get it kind of in my sermon, but we talk about the good shepherd. And I went, a homeless man called me yesterday. I'm not going to say his name, but he called me. And he said, Pastor, he said, I got friends, they're addicted, they're drugs, they're drunk. He said, the only person I can call that I know will come get me right now is you. So I told him, give me some time because we was tied up doing some things. So I had to go get the a man. The lady called me from the store. Hey, you're a pastor. He said, yes, this guy needs your help. I said, tell him, give me a moment. We're tied up, but I'm going to get over there. I went to pick the man up, you know, try to give him some food. He said he already ate. He was just in a lot of pain. He ended up having a seizure and sprained his knee in two different places. Oh, and his ankle. Barely can walk. Was, I'm talking about in a bad, bad shape. And he said he was by a church. I'm not going to say the name of the church. But he was by the church and he saw some people outside from the church. He said, hey man, can I get some help? Can I get at least some water or something to drink? I'm like, no, we ain't got nothing. And he's like, y'all at church and I ain't got no water or nothing? Mm. And he's like, man, I feel like I'm about to fall. Can some of y'all guys come help me? And they turned their head and looked the other way. And I say, what did you learn from that, brother? What did you learn from that? Same question I ask you. What did you learn from that? Give you a story about a railroad attendant. Some years ago, there was a terrible railroad accident that occurred, killing many people. A commuter train had stalled on the tracks just a few minutes before freight was due to arrive. A conductor was quickly sent to flag down the approaching flight attendant being sure that it was all well, and the passengers relaxed. Suddenly, 
However, the speed and freight of the train came bearing down upon them. The crash left a ghastly scene of horror. People died. The engineer was the second train who escaped to death. He jumped out the cab because he knew the other train was coming to get him. And was called to court to explain why he hadn't stopped. He said, hey, when they put that flag up, you were supposed to stop your train. Now a lot of people are dead. And you're at fault. What's your, what's your excuse for what happened? And this, uh, he said, I saw a man waving a warning flag, he said, but it was yellow. So I thought he just wanted me to slow down. And when the flag was examined, the mystery was, it was red, but through exposure to the sun and the weather, it became a dirty yellow. Yellow gospels are we hearing today. And the gospel we're hearing today, that you can live any way you want to live and still be saved. That's that yellow gospel. And that it doesn't really take the blood of Jesus Christ. You don't really need to be baptized in Jesus' name. You don't really need to repent. You don't really need the Holy Ghost. That's that yellow gospel where people are waving up a false flag. And when it comes right. to the plane of destruction, right. they're not going to make heaven their home. Because they were not correctly warned by a man of God in the pulpit. That's right. Dear friend, Christ has sacrificed on the cross can redeem your soul. That's the only thing that's going to save us. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 8 through 9. I think it's freezing on us. Oh, there we go. It says, but God commended his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us while we still were in sin. You know, there was times uh, I didn't think, I didn't understand how good God was. You know, it's it a really good thing. You know, I was with my son yesterday. He worked with me all day. And uh, we went to Walmart and I invited somebody to church. They said, no, we're not interested. And uh, you know me, I'm about one of the most plainest people you ever meet in your life. I try to be a little uh, nice when I people ask me stuff because I just tell you the truth. And so my son said, Daddy, why do I want to come to church? I said, why they were still about three feet away from me. I said, son, they don't understand the value of what God wants to do for them. And I hope they heard me. They don't understand the value of what God really wants to do for them. And then I walked off. That's right. God loves us. I remember when people was inviting me to church, I was just going, you didn't come. No, I ain't coming to your church. I ain't coming to your church. But if I knew what I knew now, how God really wanted to take care of me, I would have came a long time ago. But I can say, you know, Sister Freeman used to hear, I used to hear a preacher say, oh, I'm so, you got it better than me. If I knew about God, I wish I would never been a sinner. I'm glad I was a sinner. You know why? Because the devil can't trick me and think he got something better out there in the world for me than God has. That's right, that's right. I'm glad I came from the world. I know I'm not deceived. I know it's not better for them out there than it is for me being with God. You know, I know better than that. I don't have to worry about a lot of things. I don't have to worry about me when I come out of my house. Some guy sneaking to hit me with a crowbar because I never been in the wrong bed. I don't have to worry about hanging out the club and step on someone's shoes and someone busting my head with a bottle. Or getting shot. Or getting shot. Daddy, I'll shoot you now, Daddy. I don't have to worry about them things. Why? Because the Bible says avoid the appearance of evil. I'm not going to put myself in a situation. I don't have to worry about drug. I mean, uh, get, waking up in a bed, I don't even know how I got there. Because I got someone slipped something in my drink. There's a lot of things you don't have to worry about when you're living for God. Yes. And that's how God intended it to be. And it said, verse 9, but much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Hey, baby, can you get this mic set up for me to share? Uh, hello, hello? And don't, be, and don't be deceived by a anemic yellow gospel that works a powerless to save you from everlasting destruction. This is a subject that we hold in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And the theme between Genesis and Revelation is the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Old Testament is prefigured and the New Testament is personified. We could look at things that are happening in your life that if you just start bleeding the blood of Jesus Christ, you start speaking hope. You start speaking God's favor. God's going to work things out for you. And now I want to make sure that I declare to people when you come to church, you know, it's always going to be a beautiful story. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have sad days. You're going to get fired. You're going to get disappointed. You're going to fall in the midst of false brothers, false sisters that think you think have the good intentions for you, but you find out that they only care about themselves. 
And then you also find out that you got to realize that with people, there's some people that only care about you as long as they're getting something from you. Right. Yeah. And the day you tell them no, they got a problem. That's yeah. right, they do. Yeah. How dare you tell me no? <laughs> Who are you thinking Stand you up to that? Yeah. Who, how are you thinking you tell me no? And you find out very quickly when you tell the person no if they really care about you or not a lot of times. Amen. And the value of blood of Jesus Christ, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19. What does that say about the blood? 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19. And we're, I have more, but I think we're going to be able to make that a second lesson on the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Peter uh, 1, 18 through 19. As far as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver. Silver and gold. Silver and gold. From your vain conversation received by traditions of your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as the land without blemish and without spot. When we think about being redeemed, it's not about blood, it's about, excuse me, not about money, but it's about the blood of Jesus Christ. God sent his son to redeem us. Now, when we call Jesus the son of God, what are we referring to? That is the flesh and the humanity that God walked in. But inside him was the spirit of Jehovah God. We're going about to ready to close this out. I'm going to hit um, and it with uh, Hebrews 9 and 22. I feel it's time to kind of get into our sermon. And it says, without Hebrews 9 and 22, kind of jumping up. Yeah. Static, static. Get out. Jesus' name. Hebrews 9 and 22. And it says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So when you look in the Old Testament, it says that the life is in the blood. That's right. So when we they had an animal, the first blood sacrifice, if someone does not really recognize it, when Adam and Eve sinned, when they, the Bible said God killed an animal and made them coats of skin. So that was the first sacrifice because of their sin. Thank you. That sounds that sound a little better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And so we see that the thing was killed. So we look in the Old Testament, they killed animals. And what the priest would do, he would take that blood and people would stand on the congregation. And he would sprinkle that blood on the people. And that was atonement to push their sin at one year ahead. And the high priest would do that once a year. And so now that was the blood of bulls and goats. So now with the New Testament, when Jesus Christ died and shed his blood on Calvary, when we take on his name in water baptism... We get the blood of Jesus applied, and our sins are washing away. We don't have to kill any more animals more. We don't have to kill any more goats or any sheep. But once you take that blood of Jesus Christ in baptism, your sins are washed away for eternity. Right. Amen. We're going to go ahead and go into our offering. I have some more, but I feel it's kind of time to stop on the Bible lesson. And I was thinking I could probably make that two lessons. And we're going to do an offering, and we're thankful for everyone that can give. We'll probably start our second part of our service. And the sermon we're going to be talking about today is the Good Shepherd. And the one thing I want to share with you is part of worship is also giving in tithes. And uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7, what does it say? But I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Sometimes you find out that people feel like, oh, people are not giving enough. The pastor, he doesn't do enough for me. He doesn't give me enough. It ain't about me giving you. Who, why do you want something from me? I got limited resources. Why don't you want something from God that has all power, that has all the money, that has right. all finances? Right. He has everything. So we never want to put your focus into a man. You want to put your focus in Jesus Christ. And if you do God's plan and his will, he's going to work it out for you. All right. All right. So we're going to start our uh, second part of our service, which is a sermon. Uh, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. And we're going to be taking our scripture reading from John 10, 7 through 14. And if you don't mind standing and honoring the word of the Lord. I'm sorry. Yes. John 10, 7 through 14. I'm sorry. 
and we're thankful again for everybody who showed up to the house of God. And one thing I want to, I'm so proud of some of the new people being faithful, putting this as a priority, being the house of God. I'm so proud of y'all. Keep it up. This is how I started off, being faithful to the house of God. I didn't let nothing get in my way from being in the house of God. Now my little money, finances, and look at me today. Because I put God first. I don't struggle. I'm able to pay my bills. I haven't had nothing repossessed from me. Why? Because I put God first. And if you build that right foundation, you're going to make it in the kingdom of God. John 10, 7 through 14. What does it say? Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. You may be seated. Thank you for standing and honoring the word of the Lord. Now, what is Jesus? Jesus strictly declares every thought of a religion, every teaching before him was wrong and cannot stand only if it contradicts his word. There are a lot of teachers. There's a lot of philosophies. There's a lot of people that believe a lot of things. But if it contradicts the word of God, Jesus is right and they are wrong. Even with me, you know, Sean had brought out a point. He said, Joseph, what I like about you is you preach right out the Bible. You don't say, well, the Bible says this, but I think it means this. No, we're going to preach the word of God and we're going to take it as it said. That's right. Verse, and Jesus, in verse 9, it says, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. If we enter in this door the way Jesus called it, we're going to be saved. That's right. We're going to make a heaven our home. When it all said and done, the only thing that really matters is if you're saved. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how much money you made in the bank, who your name is, how famous and how popular you are. If you don't make heaven your home, you're not going to be saved. That's the most important thing you need to have in your life, being saved. All types of religions have the formula on what it takes to be saved, what it takes to please God, or what it takes to please a certain God of that particular religion. Do you know that a lot of religions have their own particular God? And they make their own God up, and they, they build a book that satisfies their religion. And if they don't, you know, that's why they can't use the Bible, because the Bible contradicts what they believe. So they make their own Bible. They make their own word. And that's why we have so much confusion. And people are wondering, well, how do I know what's right? How do I know the truth? You got to get in the book. The Bible right. says, study the right. word to show that self approved. Right. A workman should not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does that mean? That means taking time at it. For example, let's say you're a mason. You're masonry, not mason, that, that other group, but I'm talking like a brick mason. How do you know that? You start to work that concrete. You start to work that grout. There's different techniques. There's different styles to the trade. Same thing about your word of God. You need to know inside, outside. If you're struggling with sin, get in that word every day. Start reading that word every day. Start applying that word. David said, that word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. There are going to be situations where you be tempted in your life, and that word just keeps you. You know, if I, if I fail out on God, I don't do what God says, I might be lost. And there's a fear. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom and understanding. When you start feeling fear in God's word, you don't have to fear the man. You need to fear God's word. So if God tells you not to do something, and you do it anyway, guess what? You're rebelling against God's word. And you continue to rebel against God's word. Guess what? God's going to punish you. And I don't want to be punished. I don't want to be on the wrong side of the fence when God puts out the lashes. Verse 10, it says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to kill, and to destroy. Think about that for a second. All of us in our life has someone stolen something from us. Right. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Kill and destroy. Think about that. If you take a moment to think about your life, of yourself, your family, and your loved ones, hasn't the devil stolen something from all of us? That's right. He's stolen some things from us. That's right. And he ain't trying to give it back. No, he ain't. No. You know, when the devil steals something, he's playing for keeps. You know, and sometimes we've made mistakes because of selfish decisions that we have made. Ungodly decisions we've made in our past. Selfish decisions we have all made, and now we're still paying the consequences of it. Yeah, that's right. If we look at the devil, he's a tactician. Any person that who's carefully planned strategy to achieve a specific goal. We look at the devil, he has made up certain, certain, certain ways 
and certain opportunities to mess us up, to destroy us, to back us up in a corner. Why? Because the devil wants to do them things. He wants to mess us up. He wants to make sure that our family is messed up. He wants to make sure our kids are pregnant before they get married. He wants to make sure our young ladies lose their virginity. Because what's popular right now? Sex sales. That's right. That's popular right now. Well, you're not doing such and such? What? No. Girl, you know what? What? Why? Because they're pulling us into that trap. And the main thing you don't want as a young lady is to have a bunch of kids and you don't have no one to help you take care of. And then when you meet that man in your life you really want to be with, there are good men out there, and I'm thankful my hat's off for any man can take care of uh, another man's kids and step the road and jump in there and help. I'm kudos and accolades to any man that can do that. But I've had situations that there have been ladies that I have looked at, and I wasn't, I just didn't feel that's what I wanted to do because they already had a family. And I'm just being honest, and that's my choice. I, didn't, I wanted to have my own kids. I didn't have one. I didn't want to have anyone involved in my relationship. John didn't want no other man coming to my house, talking to my kid, his kids, and my kids. I just didn't want to be involved in it. And that was my opportunity. That's what I wanted in life. So don't mess opportunities up because you didn't wait. And the one thing, you know, guys, you have to use that pressure. Well, if you love me, you do such and such. No, you tell them back. If you love me, you'll wait on me. If you love them, if you love me, where's your job at? If you love me, how are you going to take care of me? If you love me, are you going to school get your education so we can live a comfortable life? If you love me, how are you going to take care? Are you going to take care of my bills? Are you going to take care of my hygiene? Are you going to take care? Of, and how are you going to take care of my kids if you can't even take care of yourself? That's right. Girls don't think about that. A lot of times they look at man, he look good. You know what? I'm tell you a secret. All those people that used to look good, we turned to an ugly, old, pale, wrinkled person later in the future. It depends on you. Some people can look good to 50, 60. But everybody's going to turn ugly one day. Ugly and old. So you can, you can enjoy the looks while they last. They're not going to be forever. Verse 11 says, I am a good shepherd. And the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Here is Jesus describes the attributes of a good shepherd. Here are some scripture references that are divine attributes. We talk about Psalms 23, 1 through 3. Psalms of David. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Almost everybody knows that scripture. Yeah. yeah. The Lord is our shepherd. I shall not want. You don't have to reach out for anything. You got God. You just start praying. You start seeking God. God's going to take care of you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. God wants to take care of him. No one can take care of you better than Jesus Christ. God wants to take care of you. I also might add in the Greek word kelos, translated good, describes that which is noble, wholesome, good, and beautiful. In contrast to that which is wicked, mean, foul, and unlovely, it signifies not only that which is good inwardly, character, but also that which is attractive outwardly. It is an internet of goodness. Therefore, in using the phrase, the good shepherd, Jesus is referencing his inherent goodness, his righteousness, and his beauty. As a shepherd of the sheep, he is the one that protects us, guides us, and nurtures his flock. And one thing we got to understand also, as you start to value your, your walk with God, God's going to start increasing things in your life. As you start to put God first, you start to make God and more important in your life, you're going to see how God starts to make things happen. How he starts to work ways out for your situation. That's right. And a shepherd flock is usually not his own. And one thing I want to share about you when we talk about the shepherd of the sheep, the shepherd is usually, it's not his sheep. So, for example, Jesus is the great shepherd. He said, I'm the good shepherd. And so if you look at the role of a shepherd, a shepherd basically is taking care of another man's sheep. And when it's taking care of another man's sheep, there's opportunities you might get killed. You might get hurt. You're out there, and you got to go through the wind. you got to go through the storm. you got to go through everything in life. And you got these wolves and bears that come, and they're trying to destroy the sheep. And you got to go there and defend them. Now, just imagine me and Sean, we'd probably take on a bear, right? If we had the right tools. <laughs> <laughs> easy, easy. 
<laughs> or, or while he's chewing on one of us, whether what we can get him off of us. And, you know, that's what we're talking about, the good shepherd. And then Jesus talked about the hireling. The hireling's not a good shepherd. He don't really care about you. He don't care about you. So what does he care about? He care about how much money he can get out of every single one of us. And, you know, it's, and sometimes, you know, uh, I want to share with people. Sometimes when I preach or teach, to be honest with you, getting asked my wife, as far as people pay tithes and offerings, I barely ever look at it. I don't really know who's paying tithes. I might see when you put an envelope, but I don't really look at it every time. I don't, and then to tell you this, on top of that, I don't even really take a salary. Because the church is not financially stable enough for me to even take a salary. So I've been basically doing this for two years while I'm taking a salary. Why? Because my love for the kingdom of God. My love for the house of God. That's so right. if someone gets agitated because of tithes and offerings, not because I'm getting it. And sometimes God works through different people to coordinate stuff. And I don't really talk to people about here who pay tithes and who doesn't pay it. You know, it's just God moving and working. And if God's on you uh, on your about something, it's because he's trying to get you to come up to the measure and the full stature of Christ and to please him. It ain't about me. It's about pleasing Jesus that knows everything. That's right. So our obligation, our duty is to obey the word of God. If I preach it and it's in the word of God and we rebel, it's on our hands. That means God's not going to hold me accountable no more. My job is to preach the word of God and my job ain't to control folks. I preach it. I teach it. You don't want to live it. It's up on you. And you don't live it. The blood and consequences on your hands. The shepherd's job is to warn people of their sins. Ezekiel 3 and 17. What does Ezekiel 3 and 17 say? It says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways, to save his life, the same wicked man should die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked, and turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he should die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. What is it saying? When we warn people about the word of God and they don't want to do it, guess what? That's on them. And you got to understand, when you don't line up to the word of God, the Bible says, perfect peace that love thy law and nothing should offend thee. And what does it mean? We get offenses come. We get upset. We get disappointed. People aggravate us. But when it's talking about when you love the word of God, you should not get offended by the word of God. If I teach what the Bible says, you shouldn't get offended by that. Because this, this word is higher than me and you. It's God. He said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither my ways are your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, my thoughts and your thoughts. This is about coming to the full statue and measure of Jesus Christ. And if it's in this word, we need to obey it. I know I was talking to somebody. They had a, a question uh about tattoos and stuff like that. And the Bible talks in Leviticus that you're not supposed to mark up yourself and make graven images upon yourself or make markings for the dead. You're not supposed to do them things. Why? Because this is not our body. It's God's. And you know, the most ugliest thing when a person gets old and had a tattoo that looks like an ink smudge. So God knows before us and he's trying to protect us. You know, especially when people got them sleeve tattoos that look really good right now. Give them about 30, 20, 30 years. They're going to look like a big old blur spot. You know, if you want to get some ink on you, man, go paint. Like and, you know, and so. <laughs> Stop wasting all that money, that three, four hundred dollars Oh, yeah, they get up there, especially if you have a, a professional person do it. And so I was thinking about someone. I talked to them. They called me and said, hey. And I didn't even think about it. And God uses people to help people. But a lot of times we're not, we don't have enough sense to realize it. So next thing I know, this person talked to me about a tattoo, and I told him what the Bible said. She's like, yeah, I'm not going to do it. But later on, she went and did it anyway. So my son's walked in one day. He said, Daddy, what's that? What's that on her leg? And she was shocked because I didn't really think about it. And she went and did it anyway. And, you know, that's displeasing to God. Because if God shows you his word, what he wants out of you, and you do the opposite, does that show? The Bible says what? Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And another they will not follow. So if we hear the word of God and we want to be saved, we have to be obedient to his word. The warning I must give to this generation, and we're almost wrapping this up, is 1 John, oh, sorry, 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, Know ye not 
that the unrighteous should not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners should inherit the kingdom of God. You would not be saved living a lifestyle of sin. You know, there was a man that came to the church, and I don't get a, you know, I want everybody to come here. I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to love God. But when it comes to the day that the word of God is offensive to you, and the word of God doesn't mean anything to you, it's going to show in your lifestyle. It's going to show in how you act. It's going to show how you respond to things. And a man stopped coming to church. He had a question. He was like, Joseph, I'm with a married woman right now. And uh, I'm in love with her. But she's married. Somebody else. And uh, you know, I just want to know your opinion on it. Guess what I told him? I told him what the Bible says. You ain't supposed to be with no married woman. She need to get divorced before you get together. He stopped coming to the church. He like I called him and said, please come back. Oh, you know, well, you know what? I make exceptions. It's okay. It don't matter what God says. Right. Wow, we got to preach the word of God. Because the Bible says, if I be a pleaser of men, I'm not a pleaser of God. And there are plenty, 20, 30 churches in Junction City, they can care less about pleasing God. Yeah. They'll preach whatever you want to preach it, how they want you want to preach it. It don't matter how they think, how you perceive God wants. And that's not what God's will is. Ezekiel 33 and 18, as we said before, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked ways to save his life, the same wicked man should die in his iniquity, but his blood would I require out that hand. Mm. And I'm thinking, I'm going to share with you about the kingdom of God. You're going to see people come, you're going to see people go, but I made up my mind when I was in church, you're not going to see me leave the house of God. When Jesus was preaching one day, it got, it got hot in the kitchen. And he told his disciples, let's eat my blood and flesh. You'll have no part in me. And a whole bunch of people walked out from him. You know what Jesus said? He said, no, please don't go. Oh, my God. Please don't go. Don't leave us. Please don't go. Come on. I can't live on without y'all being here. He didn't say that. What Jesus said? <laughs> he looked at his disciples and said, you going also? Yeah, yeah. And they said, no, no. You got the word eternal life. Uh-uh. I'm not leaving. You got what it takes to be saved. You know, because... You know, I used to, at my old church, you know, the preacher got hot, people walk out, and they want to come back. And the preacher made a good point one day. He said, there's going to be a day that you're not going to be able to walk out. Yes, and right. that's going to be the day of judgment, when we're all dead and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And you don't find in the scripture that there was a way you could walk out, because you didn't want to hear what God had to say. Yeah, you don't we're all going to give account. There ain't no time. Nobody's rushing. Nobody has to go to work. Nobody has to get paid. Everybody's going to sit there and hear what God got to say. It's going to be a scary day for a lot of people because they failed to line up to the word of God. John 10 to 12, it says, But he that is a hireling, John 10 to 12, and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Can you imagine if you were the boss, and let's say it's... Put all your uh, all y'all in a situation where you're the shepherd, and someone hired you, and next thing you know, you didn't really care about the sheep, and the, a pack of wolves came and destroyed 30, 40 sheep. How do you think that person's gonna care about you? You think they're gonna give you a raise and a holiday bonus? <laughs> no. They ain't gonna be happy with you. You probably, you're gonna probably get fired, and mm. and there might be some consequences on top of that. Oh, yeah. Can I now imagine how much my job is? If I don't preach what God tells me to preach, I don't preach a word, I can get fired. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when I get fired from God, that's not going to be a good situation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are a lot of preachers who get fired from God, and they're a wreck today. Sad to say, one of my old pastors, he died broke. Man had it all, Sean. Had it all. Lived off almost $200,000 a year. Had, had a house built from scratch. Had a double shower for him and his wife in his shower stand up. Lived people cooking for him, cleaning for him, just giving him gifts. He had no wants, but he ended up losing with God, and we don't even get a funeral for him. They just gonna do a memorial service. John 10 and 12. But the hireling that's not a shepherd, who's who the sheep are not his own, he don't care about you. You get a pastor that Preachers false doctrine, they don't care about you. They don't care about your marriage falling apart. I had a guy 
that I knew before I started my church. And he was a guy, he was tight in his church. He was faithful and he was dedicated all the time. But guess what happened, Sean? Two families got into it. His wife's family and his, his family wasn't coming. But his wife's family had, a little, had some money. So guess whose side the pastor took? The family that had money. Because he didn't care about the sheep. He cared about what he could get out of it. Jesus is the good shepherd. In this verse, Jesus was describing the difference between a good shepherd and a hireling. What does the life of a good shepherd inherit? We talked about that. Goes through danger. You know, people can call me any time of day. I'll try to be there for y'all. If you need something, and if I have it in my means, I'll try to get it to you. And likewise, it's Jesus. He wants to be there for us. He wants to help us. He wants to love on us. Even when we don't want to be loved. There are days when we don't even want to be loved. And Jesus still loves us. I remember sometimes I was coming to get Charlie, and he didn't even want to talk to me. He was like, <laughs> and he was like, hey, we need some food. Okay, I bought some. I said, what you want? I want chips, sandwiches, drink. I ran over. Charlie, get his food. He didn't want to look at him. Okay, hey, hey, man. Pass me hungry. I went get him some McDonald's. He didn't want to talk to me. He said, he don't feel like talking. I said, okay, I ain't going to bother him. Here's your food. Remember the day, Charlie? <laughs> but look what the Lord has done. And you've got to remember the hireling is not going to fight for you or your family. He's not going to fight for your kids. When your kids get destroyed and they're strung out on drugs, he don't care about you. He right. care less. He John 10, 14 says, I'm the good shepherd and I know my sheep and I'm known of mine. Jesus said, hey, I'm the good shepherd. My sheep know me. They know my voice. And I'm theirs. In closing, John 10, 27 this is a good scripture. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. That's a, the main thing about following God, is for you to get a day that you have eternal life. Do you know that God prepared heaven for us, Stuart? Yeah. Sister Freeman? God prepared heaven for us. Yeah. Streets of gold, you'll be able to see again. You'll be able to worship God. Yeah. Where the Lamb is the light. While well, being God prepared heaven for you. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to rejoice in him, with him. You just got to make up your mind. While well, Migo is the first person, Sean, I bought the church, one of my old church, 24 years ago. He's the first person I got, uh, I was able, privileged to get baptized in Jesus' name. 24 years ago. But I used to preach it to him at the alternative. We the alternative school. Where all the jokers got kicked out because we couldn't get along with folks. Yep, I was at alternative school. I used to I used to cut up. He, he met me when I first got the Holy Ghost. Boy, I used to preach it hot and heavy. I used to walk up to people. You go to hell! You ain't repent of your sins, been baptized in Jesus, and not the Holy Ghost. And one dude was like, man, ease up. He said, he said, man, I met somebody. They make you want to come, but he said, man, you feel like you're driving us away. Man, I used to tear it up. One man was like, Joseph, calm down a little bit. <laughs> One day, since Freeman, I didn't get beat up. I went back into high school to the smoke shop area where all the kids were smoking cigarettes. And I went and took all the cigarettes out of the mouth and stomped them. And started preaching to them. <laughs> I said, get that cigarette out of your mouth. Get them cigarettes out. Get them cigarettes out. And then one time, remember G-Mac and uh, Anthony Nichols? I was preaching one day. I said, y'all need to get the Holy Ghost. And G-Mac and Anthony Nichols said, man, we need to beat this dude up. And one dude was smoking a cigarette and his hands start shaking. He said, man, we beat him up, we're going to hell. <laughs> 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 yes, and that's this, this God doing things yes. in my life. And bring me to the day that I am today, that I, I love God. I love my family. I love my church. I love my kids. And it's, it's a privilege to be able to, to raise your family in a godly home. Where they know, you know what? Daddy ain't going to beat up on mommy. Daddy ain't going to slap up on mommy. You know what? Because he loves God. You know? Daddy's not going to get drunk and act crazy and do all kind of crazy stuff. He's going to be there. He's going to protect us. He's going to love us. Why? Because we have a good shepherd and we have a good under shepherd. And Jesus right. wants the best for every single right. one of us. Amen. Amen. In verse 28, he said, And I give them to them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither should any man pluck them out of my hand. 
Understand this about God. If you stay faithful and dedicated to God, you never can be lost. You, were, you make sure you got your foundation so you repent. You get baptized in Jesus. You get the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You start learning that word. You be faithful to the house of God. You be faithful to prayer. Faithful to reading. Faithful to studying. Faithful to reaching out to the lost. And obedience to the word of God and the man of God. It'll be hard for you to be lost. Jesus said, what did he say? He said, shall any man pluck them out? Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. When you're in the hand of the Lord, ain't no one can take you out. That's right. The only way you can lose out with God, Sean, if you take yourself out of the hand of the Lord. You take yourself out of his presence. You take yourself out of his goodness. You walk away because God's going to plead with you. He's going to reach at you. And sometimes you get, you're in that fight of walking with God and you're debating about things. And, and you know, the devil, he's a tactic, tactician I talked about earlier. He'll go and tell you, man, you don't need to serve God no more. You don't need to go to church. You know, why don't you go watch this movie that is Netflix? Why don't you just sit out? You're tired. You don't have to go. And what happens is a little by little, it gets you to fill out one time. The next week, it comes to two services. It comes to three services. Just like when you start off working out. Man, you're killing it. Time you up there working out. You lift a weight. And after about a week go by, you're with the again. Then the third week, you're like, you know, I need to take a break. <laughs> and next you know it's too much. You went back to the gym. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the, your walk yeah. with God. Yeah. The, that time you start taking out. I remember one time this lady was coming to church. And she said, hey, I don't want to work on church day. And they talked her into it. Hey, we really, really, really need you. She ended up working. Guess what? Service after service. They needed her again. And it stopped being a priority, being in the house of God. John 3 and 5. Jesus answered, really say unto you, except a man be born again of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And these signs should follow those that receive the Holy Ghost. Mark 16 and 17. And these signs should follow them that believe. In my name, they should cast out devils, and they should speak with new tongues. God wants you to be saved more than you really realize it. That's right. You think about that. Who created us, God? He created. He knows what you're struggling with. He knows everything in your mind. He knows every thought you're thinking. He knows every hair in your head. That's right. And every struggle you have, God can give you the power to overcome it. You just got to have a want to. Mom? You know what God's dealing with you, you need to give up. You can do it. I was at the house, God pointed it out to me. That's the only thing stopping you from getting the Holy Ghost. God knows what you need to give up. You know it too. I Say, God, I need the strength. I need the help. I'm down to six foot, huh? I, I didn't even tell her what God was doing, but God would point out her cigarettes when I was at the house. I didn't even talk to her about it. And you see how God confirmed it? What she's struggling with? And I didn't even say I was at the house. And I said, my mom ain't got the Holy Ghost. And I saw the pack of cigarettes. So if she goes, no serious, she get the Holy Ghost. And I never even told her what it was. That's not true, Pastor. You know, she, she's trying to give her mom, but at the same time, the Holy Ghost is what's going to get rid of those cigarettes. She can't do it on her. What, what, you, next time you, you give with me at the church, because she gave up crack without the Holy Ghost. Well, she gave up crack without the Holy Ghost. So she can give up some cigarettes. Yeah, but next time, please, if you don't mind, at the service, because she gave up crack. She used to be a crack addict. And you tell me, she can give up crack without the Holy Ghost. She certainly give up a pack of cigarettes. Mom, did you give up crack? Yes. You was a crack addict how many years? Yes. How many years? One. 20 years. Yeah. And you gave it up. How long has it been since you touched crack? 209. 209. And crack is more addictive than cigarettes. Tell me, can I get an amen? Amen. So, amen. So I'm just telling you that there's something about the power of God. If you believe in the power of God, God can help you. But there's a power in repentance. And if you come to the altar and you repent of your sins, I'm here to tell you, God is able to deliver unto the utmost. If you believe, I'm not here to tell you, there ain't a sin that the power of Jesus Christ can deliver you from. That's right. And this is not a good sister Freeman. Love Sister Freeman. She's been here for me. But God has let me know. God is able to save unto the utmost. And if you're struggling with anything, if you make up your mind, and you dedicate to God, and you start to pray, every time you get that urge, God, I want to pray. I want to seek your faith. I'm not going to be bound no more. That's right. There can be plenty of devils. And you make up your mind. There was a man that had 2,000 devils. And guess what? When Jesus came on the scene, 2,000 devils couldn't stop that man from worshiping God. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's what kind of God I serve. And the God that we serve is able to save unto the utmost. Amen. 
said to the Pharisees and the religious leaders, he said, bring forth fruit meets the repentance. And right. say not unto yourselves, we have Abraham to our fathers. Because when he said, he said, I have these stones. God is able to raise children of Abraham. And then he said, the axe is laid at the root. And every tree that doesn't bring forth good fruit is hidden down and cast to the fire. And that's before they had the Holy Ghost. So God was able to deliver and he demanded repentance. And then we see that John the Baptist came on the scene preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And repent and believe the gospel. And turn away from your sins. And turn away from wickedness. Turn away from idolatry. There's a lot of things that we struggle with. Because we're not praying. We're not really seeking God. Right. We're not really dedicating ourselves to God. I'm just a man like everybody else. Filled with the spirit of God. But if I don't pray, Sean. I don't fast. I don't get in that word. I can end up in a bed of adultery like plenty of other preachers. But what? I decided that I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to put this church first. I'm going to put my relationship first. And I'm going to put God first. Amen. 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 And I take walking with God serious. I take this word of God serious. And I believe if you obey God and you have faith, you have faith in God. You can overcome every obstacle in your life. You can overcome every temptation. Go with what Jesus said. Out of every point was he tempted, yet without sin. And when he said, he said, greater works will you do also. He said, greater works are you going to do. And when a person can dedicate themselves to God, they can walk with God and in the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's important about repentance. It's important about calling out to God. And you start calling out to God. The Bible said deep. Call the thunder deep. And you start getting serious about walking with God. The problem with a religion today is that a lot of people are not serious about walking with God. Right. And that's a problem. Some people get offended. And I'm going to tell you, I'm in the spirit. Mom, I didn't talk to you. But I think you talked to that lady and she got any time. Ain't that what you said? Yeah. I didn't even talk to her. She came up there. I didn't even talk to her. She asked that lady, you have any ties for the church? Yeah, I did. And did I talk to you? Did I ask you to do that? No. Did I talk to you about that? No. Why did you do it? God put it on your heart. You're just getting off and you're just being asked. And she got mad and walked out. How did I know I didn't even talk to her? Did anybody see me leave this when she went over and talked? Sure. Yeah, she left. And you know why? Because I know what I'm preaching. That's right. She got upset. I love her to death, and I hope she gets it. But that's one thing some people struggle with. And that's why I said, it ain't about paying me. It's about this word of God. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. And I'm going to preach. And I told him I love her to death. But you live in a sin, and you shack up in cohabitation. You're not saved. And I don't care if you go to the Nazarene church and the preacher condones it. That's right. Welcome to our apostolic church where there's a good shepherd and I care for the sheep. Amen. 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 And that's why you have a church full of adultery, right. full of fornication, full of homosexuality. Why? There's not a good shepherd that cares for the sheep. That's right. All right. All right. He's a hireling. And they don't care about you. They care about their money. That's right. But welcome to the church that ain't built off money. That's been off the <laughs> That's right. That's right. Of Jesus Christ. That's right. Hey, <laughs> Amen. And just like he told him to say, Amen, he said, as you eat my flesh and blood, you have no life in me. And then he walked away. And Jesus turned to the disciples. You gonna go also? They're like, no! You have the words for eternal life. Amen. I realized it a long time ago. And sister, she know I love her. 
She said, I needed to tighten up anyway. Praise be to God. Just remember, when you say, Pastor, you tighten up, it might come your way too one day. Amen. She loved, we love her. She's been here since the beginning. She know I'm not beating her, attacking her. Just, I felt I was wanting the Holy Ghost to come. And I just, thank you, sister, and I just stirred my button up. Hey, well, amigo, let me tell you something. Well, amigo, God wants to save you. And you have been lazy. And you have not overcome your sin. And you have a short time to get right with God. To say to the Lord, you don't get it right. I'm going to bring judgment on you. That's right. That's right. Love while go to death. Why me go out to carry you when you were hungry? Yeah. You can call me up. I'll get you a medicine, won't I? Yeah. And I'll preach to you. And last time he told me, he said, Pastor, I don't think I'm going to come to church again. He said, well, I said, why? He said, you got me scared. And why me, you know what that is? That's God reaching for you. That's right. That's God wants to save you. That God loves you. For the goodness of God causes us to repent. God wants to see you saved and right with him. But all of us have gone astray. That's right. yes. But now we're called unto the shepherd of our souls. You're not going to get a lot of preaching like this in a lot of churches. Why? Because God blesses when he likes. That's right. And he anoints the man of God to preach the word of God. That's right. And God's going to build a church of people that are not offended by the word of God. That's right. And if you're offended by the word of God, and it's just the word of God that take you out, are you really the sons and the childs of God? Someone claims the Holy Ghost, Sister Freeman. And they're going to be obedient to the word of God. And if you ask me what thus said the Lord, and you rebel against it, you are showing me you're not the sons and daughters of God. Why? God, you said, my sheep know my voice, and another will they not follow. That's right. right. And you can't, Sister Freeman, you can't be part of two churches and think you're part of this one. That's right. You're right about that. And I was patient and a long suffering of God, waiting in the days of Noah. But I was waiting for my time and my opportunity. And today is the day. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Don't tell me you love God and you go to a church that preaches the Son of the Lord as your personal Savior. Don't tell me you love God and you go to a church teaching the Trinity. God is one. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. One person said, Joseph, I go to the other church and I'm bringing stuff back. You ain't bringing nothing back. You can't do nothing for the truth if you're not living it. That's the greatest testimony as you know the truth and you live it. And if you're not living the truth, you're a lie. And it's a false witness. You're preaching. That's right. Come on now. That's right. There are many false witnesses, and they are destroying the body of Christ. That's right. Yes. Come on now. Yes. God shun good people like me and you. When we see a whole bunch of fakes and hypocrites, we start to think God's like that. And God is not like a hypocrite. God is not fake. There's a serious business, while we go. This ain't a church that's going to play games. Hey, Kelly, love you, thank you. You know, God's going to use y'all in a mighty way. He's already started doing it. Thank you. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for having an old mind. Her husband got baptized. She said, I'm not ready. I respect that. I love that because I don't want to raise a whole bunch of mind numb people that can't think for themselves. That's right. I sat out of a ministry with a bunch of numb minded men. Anything the pastor said, they just went with it. And they didn't think for themselves. And the people that I had the problems with, Sister Freeman, are the people that thought for themselves. That's right. I was a part of the ministry at that church. Why? Because I have my own mind and I'm not here to please any man. Amen. And Sean 
for years, 24 years. Last 10 years at church, I preached one time. 10 year period. Wasn't even considered a minister in that church. Now to guess them, I love them, thank God, hope to have revival. But I'm just sharing my heart with you. Yeah, you know what God did? We taught a lot of things, but we didn't believe it. So we talk, a man's gifts make room for himself. But when God opened the door for me, I had a church that had a problem with it. But you taught me for years, a man's gifts make room for himself. And when God opened the door for me, I had a church, they ain't happy about it. But I thought we preached, a man's gifts make room for himself. Yep. Hey, Charlie, stand up if you don't mind. This man going to be among many more. That got filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, spoken in tongues. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Amen. Now, Tom, how could a Christian be upset about that? I have no idea. The man was addicted to meth, filled with demons, came to church, got delivered, got the Holy Ghost, baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. spoke in tongues when the yeah. Holy Ghost came. That's right. Now, why, Sean and Kelly, would a Christian be upset about that? Or a body of believers be upset about that? Sean and Kelly came to church. Living for God. God's working on them. God's doing great. They brought their daughter to church. I preached about last Thursday. It's time to save our children. And they're obedient to the word of God. And they brought their daughter to the house. Thank you for coming. What's your name, sis? Nicole. Nicole, thank you for coming to the house of God. Amen. Because it's a little different. Because I'm the good shepherd and I care for the sheep. That's right. And we're going to preach the yes. word of God. Yes. Why? Because I love God. Right. Not only do I love God, Sean, I love his word. That's right. And King David said his word about hid in my heart yes. that I might not sin. So when I'm walking in the street and I'm talking to people about the Lord of love and the word of God, I have a witness and a testimony. When I'm in public, people are watching us. People are watching me. So there are some people out there who want to say, God ain't real. And they want to be able to point the finger at somebody to be able to prove their statement. Don't let that be It's a little different when you actually preach the word of God. You know, I hope the best. Love Bobby. You know that. We'll probably have a talk. And Bobby can talk to me. I love Bobby. Love Papa. Been there for him. But there comes a time that, you know, some people ask me, why I didn't deal with certain things? I didn't deal with certain situations. You know what? We just preach the word. God's going to do his thing. All we do is keep preaching. Keep preaching. When my mom went and talked to her, I know what she talked to her about. I didn't even talk to my mom. I already knew the spirit was going because she was agitated. I said, God was working. I didn't have nothing to do with that. God was working. I didn't stop my mom. My mom wasn't even thinking about that. Mom, you probably wouldn't think about it. You just came by and just said, man, let me ask her a question. Yeah. You know what? God was just using that. And sometimes God deals with people. But are you going to listen to what God says? Yeah. Are you going to listen to The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. Right. So God uses people to talk to you, to work on you, to work through him to you. And are you going to be obedient or are you going to rebel against the word of God? This is going to show if you're going to be really blessed or not. If you're going to be obedient to God's word. Amen. Ready to wrap this up? Amen. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. I, was, I was wondering when the preacher was going to show up. Yeah. Sometimes you get you get, the little, get stirred up and that's the, that's the anointing and the power of God. And no, I know everybody here, no one takes that personally. Yes, sir. They know I love them. Right. We go, we don't whip the devil together. You know I love you, Sister Reba, don't you? Yeah. She know I love her. I'm offended, man. Amen. She tough. She yeah. tough. Amen. She tough, <laughs> boy. Amen. I one time was in Salina, and the Salina church, Brother Pagans, he said, who's that lady? I said, that's one of my Sunday school teachers. She's like, oh, yeah, I look like she can put some people in line. <laughs> Amen. 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 She used to put Charlie, no, Charlie had to call her, Aaron and all them, and of course, you have to put them kids in line, boy. They just cut up sometimes. But look, thanks be to God. We're praying for that situation. All of us pray for Charlie and Angel for their kids. Amen. That God Amen. does a miracle. 
So we can add to the church daily, such as should be saved. Well, I mean, you know I love you, right? You know, he in it, this is not new. I was on his, I was at his house visiting one week ago. He's on his couch crying, Sean. He said, I don't know how much time I got. He's on his couch crying, he's scared. Because you know he's not right with God. So a lot of people on me we knew grew up in bed and hell today because they did not make their call and election sure. Let's get it right with God. Amen. Let's get it right with God. Amen. That's all you're going to do. It's so simple to be saved. The Bible said, how should we neglect so great a salvation? All we do is ask God for forgiveness, get baptized in Jesus, and God fills with the Holy Ghost. We walk with God, we're saved, and start living in the fullness of the love of God. That's so easy. You know, the Bible says, the way of a transgressor is hard. Jesus, take my yoke upon me, learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. He said, come learn of me. That means get in that word. Be dedicated to the house of God. Dedicated to church. Dedicated to things. And when you start to do that, you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. We're going places. Uh, been distracted, had some things had to get taken care of, trying to wrap that up. We're going to get out outreaching, get out reaching the laws, get out touching people, reaching people. And God's going to keep growing. Right now, we've got a good solid people are coming. Um, people are surprised. Thursday, man, we got a crowd coming to Bible study. Yes. Thank you, Sean, Amen. Kelly, and Angel. All y'all just being, coming being dedicated to church. That's where it starts, that foundation. We can build this foundation right and build it strong. I'm looking at future leaders all over this building. That the sky's the limit. Actually, space is the limit. What God can do with us. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not intimidated by men that are strong, that have their own mind. I am intimidated by that. A lot of ministers are intimidated by men that can think for themselves. I went to one of my sister, like he wasn't called sister pastor. I went to him. I said, "What's a whole bunch of having a, a bunch of men that don't even think for themselves?" He looked at me like. Where did that come from? What's whole point? I said, what's the whole point to have a bunch of yes men? They can't even think for themselves. This ain't no mind control cult. A cult, they want to think for you. They want to tell you everything. You know, you need to be able to think for yourself. Yes. You don't have to agree with everything I say. You may agree with that book. Yeah. You might even agree with everything God say. Yeah. I might have my opinions. I might have my things. But I'm going to preach behind this word, this Bible, the word of God. Hey, Amen. We're going to open up for some prayer. Take an opportunity to get it right with God. If there's anything you're struggling with, you can lay it down and ask God for the strength and ask God for the help. And he can touch you. He can love you. He can work on you. And while me, I'll come help you pray. You want to pray while me? We're going to help you pray. If you got to pray back, we're going to help you. Sean, and we're going to, we're going to come help him pray. We're going to let God have his way. If you don't feel like moving while me, we're going to help you pray. We're going to come meet you at your need. You want to be saved while me? Amen. 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 We're going to help them pray. Thank you all for joining us, Westside Tabernacle. And if you're in Junction City, need in the house of God. Amen.